Bonjour. Oui, ça va. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Adrian Ellis. Je vais parler en anglais pour vous protéger. Et uh, so, um, if I may, um, I am the director of the uh, Global Cultural Districts Network, which is a very pompous title for um, an organization which is relatively new, uh, about three, four years old. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the background to it and some of the issues that we are addressing and their relevance to uh, placemaking and to urban development in general. If you think about the great cities and the great places of the world, almost all of them are associated one way or another with profoundly uh, rich cultural legacies. If you think of Paris or London or Cairo or Delhi, you usually think of cultural um, artifacts one way or another that define them. But one of the um, attributes of globalization, if you like, is that ideas and money and people whiz around the world faster and faster. And as they do, cities move from being distinctive to being anonymized. That is to say that they all have the same retail, they have the same character, they have the same uh, uh, restaurant chains, etc. They are, in effect, anonymized. So one of the impacts of globalization is to commodify cities. But as cities fight back for inward investment, for knowledge workers, for high-end tourists, for all the things that they compete globally for, they try and assert their identities. And as they do assert those identities, it's often the case, it is the case, that they try to articulate their cultural identity. So what historically has taken a long time, sometimes tens or hundreds of years, to develop, which is the cultural identity of a city, we are now trying almost artificially to articulate in, in very short periods of time. We're trying to articulate them in four, five, six, seven years. So if you think about what's happening in Abu Dhabi with the Louvre, or you think about what's happening in West Kowloon, what these are are attempts to accelerate the articulation of a cultural identity. And um, those identities originally were in many ways organic, or even where they were planned. If you think about Museum Island in Berlin, it was originally planned by Schinkel in the 1830s. It was completed about 100 years later. Now we're trying to do that very quickly. And as we try and do that, um, there are enormous sums of money being invested in cultural infrastructure around the world. In fact, about 500 billion over the next 15 years is being invested one way or another. And the question is, how do you get it right? It is enormously difficult to get it right. And so the network that, um, uh, that I'm proud to be the director of is a network of people who are responsible for either planning or running those cultural districts and thinking about how to make it work and how to make vibrant cultural, um, uh, 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 the vibrant cultural character of, of, of cities express themselves. And one of the gratifying things about it, we now have about 50 members from all around the world, is that as well as cultural districts, districts like Le La Défense have joined that group and they've joined it because culture is such an essential part of the identity of all areas. So what are the things that we think about? The things that we think about are um, not really how to put buildings up. People know how to do that, believe it or not. It is how do you um, co-locate cultural production and cultural consumption? How do you ensure that public spaces are animated intelligently by culture? How do you wire cities so that you can use public spaces imaginatively for performance? How do you uh, think about the governance of, of spaces so that the right voices are at the table? Uh, being articulated? How do you think about um, uh, the ways in which zoning laws, um, planning laws can be used to encourage cultural development uh, in areas in ways that are organic and authentic, but also, uh, if you like, planned? Um, one of the challenges is, 
of great cultural areas is it's a bit like wild orchids. If you're an orchid hunter, you go to wild places and find fantastic, um, uh, fantastic plants. Those are naturally occurring cultural districts. What people are trying to do today, inevitably, is to cultivate orchids. That is to say, to, to, to go to a place and then try to plan that culture. And looking at what the soil is, looking at what the right developmental environment is very difficult. Um, uh, and challenging, but ultimately rewarding. If you look at um, those successful places, those places like the Quartier des Spectacles in Montreal, or those places like um, uh, the, uh, 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 the historically the Exhibition Road areas in London, you see how uh, areas have have um, uh, managed to combine uh, imaginatively. Uh, 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 mixed use and residential along with cultural deeply integrated. Um, uh, the challenge often is that the larger scale projects tend to, as it were, um, concentrate on the hardware and the, the, uh, the um, uh, buildings and give too little thought to the software and how they're operated and how they're programmed. So those are the preoccupations. They are, if you like, um, uh, the preoccupations of trying to make what is otherwise um, uh, trying to introduce an ecology into a, an often very mechanistic process of large-scale urban planning and uh, to, to introduce it in a way that allows uh, cultural development to take root in a way which will spontaneously develop and spontaneously blossom and articulate over time the expression of place which is so essential to areas like this, uh, La Défense, in order to, um, in order to uh, operate as an environment that people want to come to, that people want to live in and people want to work in. So I hope that um, uh, explains a little some of the context of, of the Global Cultural District Network and the work that we do and the work that we're proud to do. Thank you.